Okay, so this video is about um, ZP's strategy of doing parallel development of the elements that make up a medical diagnostic or an in vitro diagnostic, as opposed to kind of sequential. So first of all, let's define the endpoint. So the endpoint in many of these programs is to develop a sort of handheld meter point of care type device. So we'll have the meter and we will have a um, cartridge um, such as this. So the cartridge essentially goes into the meter and we have the sort of almost a razor blade model, you know, where you have a razor, which is the meter and the blades, which is the medical diagnostic um, itself. So, you know, the end point is some hardware, some electronics, some software and a disposable and a disposable in terms of an IVD disposable. Now, because we live in a, the modern age, alongside that as well, you you should by default build, build in a sort of cloud um, back end to your uh, medical diagnostic and you should probably build in some app as well to your medical di diagnostic. I mean the cloud and the app are kind of bolt-ons you know many glucose companies kind of have these these days but they're really bolt-ons because they started off in a time when um, you know it was enough to have the meter and the disposable but when ZP is developing we actually just we actually develop with the idea that you will have the meter the um, disposable or the you know the in vitro cartridge the cloud and the app are all really um, in place so um, if we look at sort of conventional um, let's say development strategies and I've definitely talked about development strategies I am not talking about the clinical strategy because you have to develop and you have to do clinical validation but I am talking about the um, development strategy you have to have a sensor I call it here a carrier and I'll make it's small but on my screen but essentially at ZP we're quite used to making um, let's say sensors into microfluidic devices or into cartridges so you have you have a sensor which fits within a cartridge and I called it here a carrier you have the meter itself what's this um, sensor medical diagnostic going to plug into and um, you have the app now the app can talk to the meter or it could actually be independent of the um, meter so I think, you know, when you just start off with the idea that you're going to have an app because the app can talk to the cloud or the meter could talk to the app and the app could then talk to the cloud. So the, you should at least have a sense that you're going to have an app in your um, technology stack. Um, we have a Julie database, which can be um, derivatives of it can also be the cloud database for this medical diagnostics as well. And then the other aspect when doing development is the quality system. Now, we do understand that you know, in development, you want a sort of sandbox time when you're really allowed to kind of iterate and develop fast outside of the quality system. But there is a point when you have to lock down and the quality system has to sort of kick into place. Um, now, sometimes the way that this is traditionally kind of um, approached um, is that, um, and I'll just move that slightly there, is that people will do... Um, a kind of um, idea where they will start with a sort of phase to do the sensor and they will then have an end phase to that sensor. So that assumes that within a sort of a three to six to nine month period, you're going to have done all the sensor development, and it's all locked down and it's fantastic. And then you might have a staggered start on the carrier. So you do the sensor, you do the microfluidics, then you might have a staggered start on the um, meter itself. Then you might have a staggered start on the app, um, on the cloud database and the ISO system. So when you do all these staggered starts, you are by nature pushing all your timelines out. You say, I'm going to do a bit of this and maybe then I'll start that, then I'll start that, then I'll start that, then I'll start that. And that's a sort of traditional kind of, you know, Gantt chart type approach to this. Now at ZP, you know, we are very keen on Gantt charts. So we do understand the interconnections between, you know, things let's say but what we tend to do is actually not stagger the start and all these different bits of technology and I think the reason that we're able to do this is because really we actually know we have a good idea of what the meter what the cartridge what the cloud is going to look like what the app's going to look like we unfortunately we know what this is really going to look like going into the project so um, so everything else can be sort of guided towards where we already know we want to be so what we would tend to do is start the sensor development and it's a continuous process where we're iterating and improving. We would start the microfluidics process 
we would start the meter process, we'd start the app process, we'd start the cloud process, and we'd start the, um, the quality process. Because all these processes are really um, interacting between each other. Um, you don't need to do the sensor in order to do the microfluidics, and you don't have to have completed the microfluidics in order to do the cartridge, and you certainly don't have to have done those three in order to start the app, and you probably definitely don't have to have started um, the sensor, the microfluidics, the meter, and the app in order to start working on the database and the um, quality system. You want to get that started even early on because you have to come up with your requirements documents and your risk documents. You want to start that early on. So our sort of you know strategy and theory at ZP is we like to really do parallel development versus sequential development. Sequential development sort of you do it because you don't necessarily think you know the outcomes of each phase. Whereas unfortunately we carry the confidence that means we do know the outcomes of each phase what we're doing within our sort of development is not development from scratch but we're really just repositioning technology we already have so don't start end, start end, start end. that's the sequential way of doing things actually start most things in parallel now you might do some heavy lifting on the sensor work early on and push off your quality system but actually they run in parallel throughout um, the entire development there is an end point to this, which is you have to release then products that are locked down enough for, to do the clinical assessment on, but don't necessarily run sequential um, efforts. Um, I'd actually run parallel efforts, and that's the way we do things at Zimmer and Peacock. Okay, thanks very much.